years, um, over a decade, Tanya Donnelly emerged with the throwing muses. There were uh, what her and her sister Kristen were two of the first Alterna girls. She went on to uh, work with the Breeders as well as Belly, and now you've put out your first solo album, Love Songs for Underdogs. Hi, Tanya. Hi. So, why why dissolving the band and, and moving toward a solo project? Um, we we sort of just imploded. It's a typical band story: musical differences, personality conflicts. That's all that good stuff. Because that was the first group that you had attained a gold record, some amount yeah, of mainstream stuff. I know. Stars. It is too bad. Different bands have different lifespans. Ours was unfortunately short. So it's like you you didn't feel the pressure to like hang on to this thing. Like, you know how some bands really hang on to something even right. though it's not, not happening within the dynamic of the group? There was that pressure, but um, it's, we really couldn't continue. It would have been so damaging. So how is this project different then? Did you orchestrate most of the songs, most of the pieces? Yeah, it's different in that I use a variety of musicians this time, a variety of instruments, you know, um, arranged most, most of it, wrote most of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I wrote all of it, but like, I, worked with strings and stuff like that for the first time, which was really interesting. Yeah, it has a, I, I can't help but like sort of parallel the growth of both you and Kristen. Uh, she's, she's going off and doing solo albums as mm -hmm. well. Uh, and your solo album still sounds very like, much like a band. It's not so much like when you think of solo, it's like a, a, a person by themselves. It's like you're still working within like a right. whole band concept. Are you more partial to like working with groups of people? Um, I, yeah, I mean, for me, the word solo doesn't necessarily mean alone. Mm. It, uh, I'm still surrounded by musicians who contribute, and I enjoy the input of other people. It keeps you from becoming too self-indulgent, and, um, and just other people's sparks are really important to me. Yeah, so. and Fort Apache, you're originally from Boston? I'm originally from Rhode Island, which is very nearby. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. th this is a, like so a peer group for you from, from the early days up till now. Because yeah. you're incorporating a lot of the musicians from the area yeah. and Old recording friends. in there. Mm -hmm. So after having been through a lot of this stuff, do you find you are those people constant, consistent, or did you feel that you returned back to them? Um, I, really, I don't backtrack usually. I did use David Narciso, and he's actually going to be touring with me. He was in Throwing Muses. Um, but usually I don't go backwards. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the only instance, I think. Mm -hmm. And love it. songs for underdogs. Mm -hmm. Do you, is it easier to have an affinity for underdogs than, say, the top dog? Oh, sure. Yeah, I think it's easier for everybody to relate to. And to the, the album lyrically, although you've always sort of written in that kind of abstract way, it feels much more sort of focused. And you're able to, even though it's sort of poetically written, you're still able to, to sense those vulnerabilities and so forth. Yeah. In your work. You repeat a line that says, I have, uh, everything I have learned is wrong. And right. it repeats again sort of in another song in a different formation. <laughs> but do you, is, do you have regrets? Do you feel like what you've been, what you've learned through your life is wrong? No, it's, that's more kind of a process of deconstruction that I'm going through right now of breaking down um, ideas that I've held on to as being true when um, I'm sort of starting to realize that certain things... What sort of ideas? Um, just the way music should be worked, the way that relationships progress. Things that, um, that I've always held on to as being truisms and, and are ne aren't necessarily true. That's sort of what that, that refers to. I've, been, I've had a, a chaotic uh, couple of years and, and I'm learning to embrace chaos instead of fight it. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, it, it, found, it was interesting too to see that you're writing love songs and you're married. And I'm wondering, yeah. are, you, are you basing these love songs on your marriage or can you in fact fall in love with other people or while still being married? Wow. <laughs> oh God, this is funny territory. Um, sometimes when I'm writing about, um, first of all, not all the songs on here are love songs. In fact, the title is sort of ironic in some ways. Um, uh, I think it's possible, not, I mean, I'm in love with my husband, mm -hmm. I, which does not mean that every song of mine that, come, that comes across as a love song is about him. Um, the, because I, I feel like more, like more of a conduit than that. I don't write purely from my own experience. Um, sometimes I'm moved by, by concepts um, and it feels like being in love, you know? So I wouldn't say, I, I can write a love song that's not necessarily drawing from my own experience. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, that's yeah. great. We're going to be seeing your uh, your new new video pretty deep. And where are you playing coming up? Are you is this just a promotional tour? Um, yeah, it is okay. right now. We're going to be back on October the twenty fifth. We're playing at the Horseshoe. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot for coming down. Thank you. Okay, Tanya Donnelly, pretty deep.